Welcome to Knowledge Journey, where we explore the mysteries of human emotions and the complex ways they shape our interactions. Today, we delve into a feeling as old as time itself, jealousy. Often hidden behind smiles and casual remarks, jealousy can slip into conversations subtly and unexpectedly. I'm your host, and in this episode, we'll uncover the top 10 phrases that people say when they're jealous, revealing what lies beneath the surface of these seemingly innocent comments. Picture this. You've just shared news of a recent promotion at work in a group chat. While most friends send their congratulations, one message reads, Well, you're just lucky, I guess. It seems harmless, right? But there's often more to these words than meets the eye. Studies show that jealousy activates particular pathways in our brains, closely linked with pain and fear. Emotions that can lead us to react in ways that might not reflect our true intentions. As we go through each phrase today, I'll not only explain what these statements might mean, but also provide you with real-life scenarios and insights from recent psychological research. So, whether you're looking to understand more about others, reactions, or introspect about your own feelings, this journey is for you. Let's get started by diving into the hidden meanings behind the most common phrases driven by jealousy. Stay tuned as we reveal the subtleties of envy and learn how to navigate the intricate dance of human emotions together. Part 1. You're just lucky. Moving right into our first phrase, you're just lucky. Imagine you've just told a friend about a recent success. Maybe you won an award or achieved a personal goal. Instead of congratulating you, they respond with, you're just lucky. This comment, while seemingly benign, carries a heavy undertow of jealousy. Why do people say this? At its core, attributing someone's success to luck is a way to discredit their hard work and abilities. It suggests that their achievements are not the result of effort or skill, but rather the consequence of random chance. This is a protective mechanism, shielding the speaker from feeling inadequate or unsuccessful by comparison. Let's look at a specific example. Consider Sarah, an artist who recently had her work featured in a renowned gallery. When she shares this exciting news, her colleague remarks, you're just lucky you know the right people. Here, the colleague's comment implies that Sarah's talent wasn't the deciding factor. Her connections were. According to a study by the University of San Diego, such responses are common when individuals perceive a threat to their self-esteem, leading them to undermine others' successes as a way to preserve their own self-image. As we move to our next phrase, keep in mind how these subtle cues can reveal deeper feelings of envy. Understanding this can help us foster more supportive and positive interactions even when our initial instinct might be to downplay others' successes. Part 2. I could do that if I really wanted to. Now, let's unpack our second phrase. I could do that if I really wanted to. This is a classic remark you might hear after someone achieves something notable, whether it's mastering a new skill, securing a dream job, or even completing a difficult fitness challenge. It's a way for the speaker to save face, suggesting that the only thing separating them from a similar achievement is their own choice not to pursue it. For instance, imagine Jack, who just completed a marathon under three hours, a significant accomplishment. At the celebratory dinner, a friend casually comments, I could do that if I really put my mind to it. This statement subtly diminishes Jack's achievement by implying that it's not particularly special or difficult, thereby reducing the perceived disparity in capability between Jack and the speaker. According to psychological research, such comments stem from a concept known as self-evaluation maintenance, where individuals feel threatened when someone close to them excels in an area they themselves value. This theory helps explain why people might make such dismissive remarks. By asserting their potential to achieve the same, they buffer their self-esteem against feelings of inferiority. Part 3. 
you must have a lot of time on your hands. Venturing into our third phrase, you must have a lot of time on your hands. We touch upon a comment that's often tossed around lightly, but can carry a sharp sting. This remark is typically directed at individuals who have accomplished something that requires dedication, be it crafting, learning a new language, or even organizing community events. It subtly suggests that such achievements are not a matter of skill or passion, but merely the result of having more free time than others, an assumption that belittles the effort involved. Imagine Lisa, who has just finished writing her first novel. When she shares this milestone, a co-worker responds, You must have a lot of time on your hands. This comment implies that Lisa's accomplishment is less about her literary talent and more about her leisure, effectively diminishing the discipline and hard work she invested. It can feel like a dismissal of her dedication and creativity, reducing a significant personal achievement to a mere byproduct of circumstance. The emotional weight of such a statement can be profound. It touches on deep-seated fears about how we allocate our time and whether our pursuits are worthy. A study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology suggests that when people feel their own time management is being judged, they are likely to project those insecurities onto others, often in the form of belittling their accomplishments. As we explore this phrase, let's dive deeper into the emotional undertones it evokes. It's not just about the words spoken, it's about the feelings of inadequacy they might mask. Why do we sometimes choose to undermine others' time investments instead of celebrating their achievements? This reflection points us toward a broader discussion about empathy, recognition, and the value we place on different types of productivity. In the next part, we will examine another phrase, it must be nice to have that kind of money, to further unravel how financial envy can color our interactions and distort our perceptions of success. Keep listening as we delve into these nuances, aiming to cultivate a deeper understanding and kindness in our everyday exchanges. Part 4. It must be nice to have that kind of money. Next, we encounter a phrase steeped in financial envy. It must be nice to have that kind of money. This comment often surfaces when someone achieves something perceived to be out of financial reach for others, whether it's buying a luxury car, vacationing in exotic locales, or purchasing a dream home. It's not just a remark, it's a reflection of the speaker's internal conflict about wealth and accessibility. Consider the case of Elena, who recently bought a beautifully renovated home in a coveted neighborhood. At her housewarming party, a friend murmurs, it must be nice to have that kind of money. This isn't merely an observation. It's a laden expression of unspoken yearnings and perceived inequalities. The comment implies that Alina's achievement is less about her hard work or financial acumen and more about having ample funds, suggesting a barrier that separates us from them. This phrase can evoke complex emotions. On one side, it may reveal the speaker's struggles with their financial situation or their frustrations about socioeconomic barriers. On the other, for the recipient, it can feel like their efforts are overlooked, reducing their success to mere financial luck. A 2015 study in the Economic Journal found that such feelings are not just personal. They echo a societal discomfort with wealth disparity which often manifests in our interpersonal interactions. Diving deeper into the emotional landscape, let's consider why people might use this phrase. Is it a covert plea for sympathy or acknowledgement of their own hardships? Or perhaps a way to connect over shared struggles, albeit clumsily? This comment opens a window into the complexities of how we perceive success and value, challenging us to respond with sensitivity and understanding. Part 5. Are you sure you can handle that? As we progress to the fifth phrase, are you sure you can handle that? We delve into a subtly undermining question that can see doubt and diminish one's sense of capability. 
This comment often arises when someone embarks on a new venture or takes on a challenging role. It's cloaked in concern, but the underlying message might be less benign. Take the example of Michael, who has just accepted a promotion to a managerial position within his company. During a family gathering, when he shares his news, an aunt skeptically asks, Are you sure you can handle that? Despite its outward appearance of care, this question can insinuate that Michael might not be up to the task, suggesting a lack of faith in his abilities, which could shake his confidence. The emotional impact of such a statement is multifaceted. For the person on the receiving end, it can feel like a blow to their self-esteem, as if their skills and their readiness for the role are being called into question. According to psychological research, including a notable study from Harvard University, such expressions of doubt can significantly influence how individuals perceive their own abilities, potentially leading to increased anxiety and reduced performance. Why then do people use this phrase? It might be an expression of their own insecurities or concerns projected onto another. It could also be an unconscious attempt to keep someone within what they perceive as safe boundaries, motivated by a desire to protect, but executed in a way that feels restrictive. This exploration into the dynamics of doubt invites us to consider how we communicate our concerns about others' choices. Are we offering support or are we unconsciously imposing our own fears onto them? Understanding the root of these questions can help us frame our words more thoughtfully, encouraging rather than constraining the ambitions of those around us. Part 6. It's not that big of a deal. In this segment, we explore a phrase that might seem trivial on the surface, but can carry a significant emotional weight. It's not that big of a deal. This statement is often used to downplay someone else's achievements, suggesting that their efforts or successes are unremarkable. It's a subtle form of belittlement that can deeply affect the recipient, making them feel undervalued. Consider the case of Anna, who has just been awarded a prestigious scholarship to study abroad. Full of excitement, she shares the news with a group of friends, only for one to respond, it's not that big of a deal. This dismissive comment can instantly dampen Anna's joy, casting a shadow over her accomplishment. The implication is clear, what she values highly isn't worth much in the eyes of others, which can be isolating and hurtful. The psychological underpinnings of such remarks are rooted in envy and the minimization of perceived threats to one's self-worth. A study from the University of Pennsylvania found that people often use diminishment as a coping mechanism to deal with their own feelings of inadequacy or failure. By belittling another's success, they temporarily soothe their own insecurities. Why might someone feel compelled to make such a comment? It often reflects their internal conflicts, struggles with self-esteem, dissatisfaction with their own life's progress, or even a deep-seated fear of being left behind. Recognizing this can be pivotal in responding with empathy rather than defensiveness. Part 7. Everyone gets lucky sometimes. Now let's delve into our seventh phrase. Everyone gets lucky sometimes. This remark is commonly thrown around when someone achieves something impressive, and it serves to attribute their success to mere chance rather than skill or hard work. It's a way of suggesting that the achievement isn't entirely deserved, and any accolades should be taken with a grain of salt. Imagine Brian, who just secured a major client for his company, a win that boosts his career significantly. At the office celebration, a co-worker comments, Well, everyone gets lucky sometimes. This statement subtly undermines Brian's effort and strategic planning, insinuating that his success was more about being at the right place at the right time than about his professional capabilities. The emotional resonance of this phrase can be quite damaging. It dismisses the hard work and intelligence involved, potentially making the achiever feel that their efforts are not seen or appreciated. According to a study in the Journal of Social Psychology, such remarks can also foster a toxic environment 
where luck is deemed the main driver of success, thus devaluing persistence and diligence. Why do people use this defense mechanism? Often, it's a way to mitigate their own feelings of failure or envy. By attributing others' successes to luck, they can avoid confronting their personal or professional shortcomings. It's an attempt to level the playing field, at least in their own minds, by reducing the significance of achievements they find threatening to their self-esteem. Understanding the dynamics at play with this phrase helps us cultivate a more compassionate perspective. We recognize that behind the facade of such comments often lie deeper insecurities and a struggle for self-acceptance. Part 8. I'm surprised they chose you. As we venture further into our exploration of jealousy, we arrive at a particularly cutting remark. I'm surprised they chose you. This phrase is often expressed in a tone of disbelief or shock when someone achieves a milestone or is selected for an opportunity that others might have also desired. It's not just a statement of surprise. It's an insinuation that the recipient of the good news may not have been the most qualified or deserving candidate. Consider the scenario with Tom, who has just been promoted to a senior management position over several other contenders. During a casual office gathering, a colleague leans over and whispers, I'm surprised they chose you for the role. This seemingly simple comment can have a complex impact, implying that Tom's promotion was an oversight or a mistake, rather than a recognition of his skills and efforts. It sows seeds of doubt not only in Tom's mind, but potentially in the minds of others about his suitability and merit. Psychologically, this kind of statement can be deeply undermining. A study published in the Journal of Behavioral Science suggests that such expressions of disbelief can affect an individual's self-perception and performance by instilling a sense of illegitimacy in their achievements. The speaker often unconsciously projects their own feelings of inadequacy and competition onto the person who has succeeded, attempting to recalibrate their internal sense of justice in the face of their perceived inequity. But why do people feel compelled to express their surprise in this way? It often stems from their own insecurities about not being chosen or recognized. By voicing their surprise, they are not just questioning the decision, but also indirectly seeking validation for their own worth, which they feel has been overlooked. Part 9. That seems easy enough to do. Moving on to our ninth phrase, that seems easy enough to do, we uncover another common yet subtly disparaging remark. This comment is often made when someone wants to diminish the perceived difficulty of a task or achievement, suggesting that it requires little effort or skill. It's a way to trivialize someone else's success, making it seem less significant than it truly is. Imagine Leah, who has just completed a complex project that involves coordinating multiple teams and managing a tight deadline. Proudly, she presents her work during a company meeting. However, one of her colleagues responds with, that seems easy enough to do. This offhand comment not only undermines Leah's leadership and organizational skills, but also belittles the stress and hard work she endured. It implies that what she accomplished was trivial, something anyone could achieve without much strain. The psychological effects of such a remark are not trivial. According to research from the Journal of Applied Psychology, minimizing someone's achievements can lead to feelings of devaluation and can erode self-esteem, particularly if these messages are received consistently. This type of comment reflects a common defensive mechanism where the speaker attempts to protect their ego by downplaying the achievements of others. So why might someone feel the need to say this? Often, it's a reflection of their own insecurities, or perhaps a misunderstanding of the complexity involved in the task. They might feel threatened by the competence or diligence of others, and respond by reducing these qualities to something mundane and easily replicable. This defensive posture can be an attempt to restore their self-image, shaken by comparison. 
Part 10. Why would you even want that? We conclude our exploration of jealousy-induced remarks with the phrase, why would you even want that? This question, often posed in response to someone's achievement or new possession, subtly undermines the value of the target of envy. It suggests that the desire or goal is trivial or unworthy, questioning not just the achievement, but the personal preferences and aspirations of the individual. Consider the experience of Jasmine, who excitedly shares her decision to pursue a PhD in a relatively obscure field of study. During a family dinner, a relative asks, why would you even want that? This question implies that her academic pursuit is frivolous or lacks merit, casting a shadow of doubt over her passion and the value of her ambitions. This phrase can stir deep emotional responses. It challenges the very foundations of a person's choices, potentially making them feel misunderstood or marginalized for their interests. Psychologically, this kind of query reflects the questioner's difficulty in appreciating diverse perspectives and values. A 2017 study in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that such dismissive questioning can significantly impact the individual's confidence in their choices, sometimes even leading them to abandon their goals. Why do people use this question as a response to someone else's plans or achievements? It often stems from their own inability to see the appeal or value in different pursuits. This lack of understanding can be a cover for their envy or a manifestation of their discomfort with divergent paths that challenge their worldview. As we wrap up this series, let's reflect on the importance of nurturing an environment where achievements are celebrated and personal choices are respected. Understanding the motives behind these common phrases of jealousy allows us to respond with empathy and support, rather than perpetuating feelings of inadequacy and division. Thank you for joining me on this journey at Knowledge Journey, where we strive to bring light to the darker corners of our interactions and help build a more understanding and supportive community. Stay tuned for more insights in our next episodes. Conclusion, Navigating the Landscape of Human Emotions as we conclude our exploration of the 10 things people say when they're jealous, we've uncovered not just the phrases themselves, but the deep currents of emotion that drive them. Each comment from, you're just lucky, to, why would you even want that, serves as a window into the complex interplay of envy, insecurity, and the human condition. Jealousy, as we've seen, is a natural emotion but it's how we handle it that can define our relationships and personal growth. Recognizing these phrases in conversations isn't just about identifying envy in others. It's also a call to introspection. Why do these statements affect us? What insecurities are they tapping into? And how can we respond in ways that foster resilience and understanding? In everyday life, Fostering an empathetic and supportive environment can transform how we interact with each other. By choosing to celebrate achievements and embrace diverse ambitions, we create a community that thrives on mutual respect and admiration. This approach not only alleviates feelings of inadequacy, but also empowers us all to pursue our passions without fear of judgment or diminishment let's carry forward the lessons learned from these common expressions of jealousy. Let's strive to be the individuals who respond with encouragement rather than envy, who ask questions to understand and not to belittle, and who recognize that behind every achievement, there is a story worth celebrating. Thank you for being part of this insightful journey on Knowledge Journey. Together, Let's continue to delve into the intricacies of human emotions, uncovering more about ourselves and how we relate to others. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this episode, and keep tuning in for more explorations into the fascinating world of psychology and beyond.